Welcome to Geared Up. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. We have got a great show today. Everything from rideable luggage. Rideable luggage, that's right. To smart toilets controlled by Alexa. This is getting weird. <laughs> Very weird. Uh, we've got tons of stuff to talk about. Highlights from the Consumer Electronics Show, CES. Andrew is just back from Vegas. Yeah. You survived, Andrew? I did survive. I mean, it's tough. See, you've been there before. I have. It is the largest tech show in the world. It covers, I don't know, multiple football fields worth of show floor space. And now it's even outgrown the convention center to even spilling into various hotels across Vegas. So it, this is a monster. It's crazy. Absolutely. We're going to get a lot of the highlights from you, your experience on the show floor. We're going to be drawing on our GeekWire reporting down there in Las Vegas from the past week. A big shout out to National Car Rental for yes. sponsoring Geared Up. You can uh, check them out at nationalcar.com, nationalcarrental.com. That's right. And uh, they are uh, just a, a great sponsor. And I had my first National Car Rental experience yes. this past week, which we're going to be talking about later on in the show. About that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So with that, let's get started. Should that was the in? preamble. <laughs> That's right. Now the show is actually going to begin. So we should tell you that what, what happens is we record the podcast and radio show. We'll go for about 10 minutes here in the first segment, and then we will take a break and we will be answering your questions on YouTube live. Right. So any questions you have, drop them in the comments on YouTube. Hello, Techno Dad. Hello, Bruno Amaro. Hello, Always Viral. We should point out later on, we are also going to be announcing the winner of the Echo Spot. Yes. The giveaway, the right. Geared Up giveaway. So stick around for that. And with that, let's jump in. All right. Welcome to Geared Up from GeekWire.com in Seattle. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. Andrew, we have a huge show today. You are just back in the studio from Las Vegas. That's right. CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, happened last week. We've got a lot of news to cover. Absolutely. And we're going to be talking today about a lot of the highlights, things that stood out as either meaningful or, frankly, just a little bit funny. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot funny. I mean, CES, as cool as it is, can also be very ridiculous with companies betting on weird futuristic tech. But it is a glimpse of the future in a lot of ways, for better or for worse. Right. We're going to have everything today from robots to smart toilets to rideable luggage and a great video, Andrew, of... <laughs> What you look like riding around riding on, on, luggage. on the CES yeah. show floor. Hey, before we jump in, uh, you, sh you should don't, don't forget to subscribe to Geared Up. You can get that at geekwire.com slash geared up. You can go on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Google Play. Also, you can subscribe to Andrew's YouTube channel, youtube.com slash gear live to see every show. That's right. Big thanks to National Car Rental for sponsoring Geared Up. And with that, let's jump in with our CES highlights. All right. First, first story. What is it? The robot, Andrew. Robot. Yes. Robots were a big thing at CES this past year. Sony reintroduced its robot dog. Mm -hmm. Lots of People different AI assistants, but this robot in particular is one that stood out to you. First, for people who are listening on the radio or podcast, describe this particular robot to folks. This robot's name is Curry, and Curry is cool because it can actually roam around your house on its own. So it's kind of like a super miniature version. I think it's like maybe two feet tall. Super miniature version of, remember the Jetsons? They had that robot. I forget yes. the robot's name. I don't remember that one either, um, but yes. So it's kind of like that. It can't do your dishes. It can't cook your dinner or fold your clothes or anything. But what it can do is uh, you can interact with it. It has touch sensitivity. So if you pet it, for example, it'll purr. Um, you can have it do, you can have it answer questions. Something similar to what you do with an Amazon Alexa. But the cool thing is that its eyes also double as cameras. So it will, on its own, autonomously, like a robot should, um, go around and capture pictures or video moments that occur in your home. So let's say the dog does something cute or you have a toddler who does something, right? It'll capture these videos. It'll save them in your app. And as you go through the app, you can see these videos and you can delete them. But anything that you hit the heart on, it'll train itself through machine learning. Oh, this is the kind of thing that he or she likes to see. So I'm going to try to capture more of this type of thing. Interesting. Yeah. And when you're away, you can actually direct it. You can, you can like, remote control, like, send, you, hey, show me what's in the kitchen or send it, you know, drive it somewhere and see what's going on in your house when you're not there. So this is interesting because there is all of this privacy Hold on. Concerns. Rosie the Robot. That's, that was the Jetsons. Yes, Rosie that's right. Robot. Rosie the Robot. Techno dad. Ro Rosie the Robot, uh, techno, techno Dad listening on the live stream, watching on the live stream. And 
But that was a large robot. Right. That, that was a that was cleaned a the house size. as well. Right, exactly. I remember this now. I can picture <laughs> it. So, but there are so many privacy concerns. We've seen this with a lot of the smart cameras and the Amazon Key and everything like mm-hmm. that. Would you ever be concerned about having this thing zoom around your house using machine learning to figure out what was going on and then reporting back to <laughs> back to the home front? That's interesting. I mean, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, we're in this weird transition phase where I think maybe like our children mm-hmm. won't care at all about right. that. Either they won't care at all or, or they'll care a lot. Um, but right now, everybody's just excited to have this new functionality that we've never had before, which is cool. Um, I do, I would prefer it to be a private thing. I mean, I don't want, you know, I don't know if it, if it is or isn't. I don't have the answers to that. But, you know, it is, it is kind of odd having a pair of eyes in your house that can just roam around and capture things when you're not there. So this robot's name is Curry. Curry. Who K-U-R-I. makes it? Um, I don't remember the name of the company itself, um, but it is available for purchase right now. How much so, does it cost? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Right. But just look it up. HeyCurry.com. Okay. HeyCurry.com. Okay, very cool. All right. Next up in our CES roundup, this is a new oh, yeah. phone that big. was shown. We've got it right here on the table here. in front of us. Huawei. Yeah. This is essentially their new flagship phone. It must be an Android device, yeah, right? Yeah, Android device from Huawei. This comes out on February 18th to start shipping. So I have an early um, release model here. This is the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. This is their big entry into the United States market. Now, Huawei phones have been available for purchase in the U.S. before. They are usually unlocked when you buy them. But this, actually, there's a weird there's a weird controversy. This was supposed to be an announcement with AT&T. Huh. And AT&T was supposed to be the first carrier ever of a Huawei device in the United States. And there's all these rumors in the background saying that the FCC and the United States government pressured AT&T into dropping this deal due to, I don't know, I don't know if the, suspicion is the right word, of Chinese hardware becoming, you know, I mean, everything we buy here is like made in China. So I'm kind of, conf- I don't know if you know about this, but yes. I'm kind of confused. Tell, tell me what's going on. So essentially, obviously, there have been longstanding concerns about this, but it does surprise me that that would happen with AT&T. So, yeah. so is this essentially now just available as a standalone device without a carrier? Correct. No carrier. So it's unlocked and you cannot buy it from any of the carriers, but you can buy it from Amazon, Best Buy, Microsoft Store, B&H Photo, um, things like that. So basically, you c- it's, it's readily available. Again, it ships on the 18th of February, but this is, for all intents and purposes, this is a flagship device that competes right along with the iPhones of the world, with the Samsung Galaxy, no- um, Ga- Galaxy S8, Galaxy Note. This is... Uh, a flagship device. If you look on the back, you've got dual cameras from Leica built in there. You've got a six-inch display that supports HDR, 128 gigabytes of RAM. Like this is a flagship device, and um, they're trying to come in and compete. So without the AT and T connection, though, this right. is going to be a lot tougher for them. I think so. I mean, that's my suspicion because on the one hand, when you go into if you're an AT and T customer and you go into a store, you're looking for phones, you'd bump into this, right? On the other hand. And I don't know how many people do their shopping in those types of stores anymore. Because you go to Best Buy, it'll be there. You're shopping on Amazon, it's there, but you have to search for it. You know what I mean? You go to the Microsoft store, it'll be there. So I'm not sure, and that's a weird one too, because it's not a Microsoft device, not running Microsoft software, mm-hmm. but it'll be there. Um, it'll definitely be tougher than if it was just at an AT&T store, but it is another option in the flagship phone, you know, choices that we have out there it's just an odd device like i don't know that people who would first walk up to it and look at the brand name not knowing how to pronounce it um they do have a big media blitz though they're they're going with wow way yes so hey i think that's smart like trying to get people to pronounce it and so i think they have a a tough road ahead as far as this first device but it is a good entry like if you just put the hardware next to the other flagships in the u.s and delete the brand names from them, and you were to just choose a phone based on how it feels and how it works, this would be right up there. Very thin device. So that is the Huawei Mate 10 Pro coming to the U.S., was previously released internationally from the Chinese telecom giant, the Chinese uh, uh, hardware maker, very very, uh, significant company, and it is interesting sort of the international intrigue that's come along with it. Right. Oh, one other thing about this phone before we switch topics. 
we were talking about how the iPhone, yes, thousand dollars to start, right? And then you go, you bump up, it'll go to eleven forty nine. There's a Porsche design version of the Huawei Mate Ten Pro that will be over twelve hundred dollars. Wow, okay. two hundred fifty six gigabytes of storage, but over twelve hundred bucks. Wow, so that puts this as the most expensive smartphone in the U.S. Wow, incredible. Okay, so that is a very interesting phone to watch. Now I want to talk about this, Andrew. What do you got? I've got some. Uh-oh. A oh. look at you. What we're seeing now is Andrew. Is called the Moto Bag. Okay. It is smart luggage that you can ride. I mean, so, that's pretty much it. Smart so luggage that you can ride. I'm looking at this. It actually looks somewhat stable. You've got it on its <laughs> side. You've got it on its side, and you're essentially sitting on it, and it's going around. So it's essentially powered by some kind of battery yeah. inside of it that battery rolls you around. Um, what 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 exact, What's going on here, and how might people use this? Well, you use it in the airport. So if yeah. you're in the airport, you want to get to your gate. You just sit down. It's not even on its side. That's actually how you, how you how you use it. Now you can pick it up, and it does have a handle. You can pull it like normal. But for fourteen for one thousand four hundred ninety five dollars, so for fourteen ninety five, you can buy a bag that does all the stuff that your regular carry on does, but allows you to drive around. And that's cool because it goes eight miles per hour, up to eight <laughs> miles per hour, and it has a fourteen mile battery. So when you're at the airport leaving. And when you land and you need to get to your gate or you need to get to the baggage claim, and then when you go back to the airport, like basically your four airport trips, that'll cover it. <laughs> that'll cover it. 14 miles. That will cover I, it. I got to say, who's going to use this Don't thing? it look cool? <laughs> it looks – I love the concept. It looks like Bowser. I love the concept. The amount of times that you would actually – use this thing i don't know i could see myself maybe getting from the light rail at SeaTac airport to the main terminal but other than that wow this seems like a big stretch i would certainly not pay 14.95 you're not buying it <laughs> no i'm not buying this i love one. asking you what you're gonna no, buy so not, this is not, not buying this buying. one i love the concept though and i love the the hybrid nature of the technology when somebody can essentially take something like luggage and turn it into actual transportation right. I like it. i would just never get it you know what's weird though here's what's weird about this I'm on this luggage riding it, which one of the one of the points of riding luggage is to like conserve your energy, right? But it's so <laughs> like it's hard to balance, hectic and hard to balance that when I got off, I was exhausted from like <laughs> from fear, from fear I was going to run into people. So I would have been I would have been less tired just walking. All right, so what's this thing called again? This is the Moto Bag. It's available now, fourteen ninety five. And hey, if you travel a lot and you just want a way to get around the airport, I mean. It's pretty cool. Okay. It's pretty cool. All right. Very good. Okay. Next up, the TCL Ooh, TV. Yes. Now, Andrew, you always bring back all of these fancy TVs for us to look at. <laughs> yep. I mean, when, when we were going into CES, we were talking about 8K. Right. And we talked last week. The 146-inch, the wall from yeah, Samsung. Yeah, the wall from Samsung. Exactly. Right. How does this thing stack up from TCL? So from TCL, now, so now what we're doing is we're getting realistic, okay? Last week we talked about 8K TVs that were 88 inches and 146-inch TVs that are modular. And these are TVs that either will never see the light of day or if they do, they will cost six figures. So they're only going to be purchased by major corporations to, like, show off in their lobby. The TCL, TCL just announced this. This is the 6 Series. And what they did last year was they dropped this TV called the P-Series. No one had heard of TCL. No one, they just assume, okay, this is one of those off, knockoff brands. I don't know what this is. The TV's inexpensive. This must be a cheap TV. Then the reviews start coming out. The P-Series at $650 was rivaling the best TVs from LG, Samsung, and Sony, which would sell for two or three times the price. Wow. Now, there were a couple, a few complaints people had. One was that the, the display was great, but the build quality was like plasticky and, you know, not that great. So this year... They're going from the P-Series to the 6-Series. They're upping their game in the design. It's metal frame, small bezels, even more backlighting zones. It's full array backlighting. So it's called full array local dimming, which basically means you get this great contrast ratio because mm -hmm. different areas of the screen can be darker or brighter than other areas. They've upped the number of backlight zones. They're adding a 65-inch version. Last year was only 55. And the 55-inch version with all the improvements is probably going to remain at the same $650. It's going to be the best TV for the money 
that you can find out there. So where do you get these things? Just online or yeah, you Best Buy? You go to Buy? Amazon, you go to Best Buy, places like that. They are legit. They make their own panels, and they own Alcatel, which is an Android smartphone maker. Sure. This year, Alcatel phones are all running TCL panels in the phones. So those phones are now, their flagship phone from Alcatel is in the $300 range because they don't have to buy, you know, like Apple's buying these $250 panels from Samsung, $150 panels from Samsung for the iPhone 10. TCL makes their own panels. They don't have these expensive, you know, they're basically able to drop the price because they make all their own parts. So this is a TV to take seriously the next time you're out Absolutely, shopping yes. For if you're one. shopping for a 55 or 65-inch TV, especially if you're a gamer because the the rate on the TV is so short, it's fast. Like, the response time is quick. This is the TV to look for. It's going to ship this spring. So in the next couple months, be on the lookout, TCL 6 Series. I love it. Usually you come back with all these flashy things that I would never get. But here is a practical tip right, right. for something that You'd could buy save you this. money. I would totally You'd buy, buy this. this. See? To there replace my 36-inch uh, yes. 720p uh, to, uh, <laughs> circa 2013 right, television. Right. $650, and you yep. can go 4K, HDR, Dolby Vision, okay. great, great gaming TV, great picture. So that's the TCL. That's one of Andrew's picks from CES 2018. Yes. He is just back from Las Vegas. We're talking about all of the highlights and some of the lowlights and some of the crazy gadgets that came out at the big consumer electronics show. And we will be right back with more on Geared Up on GeekWire. You're listening to Cairo Radio. 97.3 FM. Welcome back to Geared Up on GeekWire. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. We have a lot to talk about coming up, including a smart toilet that smart I just toilet. can't wait to talk about. Who doesn't about. want one? <laughs> Charles Barkley, for one. <laughs> <laughs> he, he had a great quote on uh, GeekWire. Basically said, okay, America, you got to wipe your own ass. <laughs> oh, can we say that on this show? <laughs> I don't know. I we'll see so. if we, we can just did. Out. We just <laughs> did. Right. All right, we just did. All right, hey, before we get on with the rest of the show, we have some business to take care of. Yes, we, we did, have a winner. We did a giveaway a couple weeks ago, and we just picked our win winner. And, Andrew, you have his name. Yes, you wrote it down, though. It's Juan Hunter. Juan Hunter. Of Danville, Virginia. Bam, you just won the Amazon Echo Spot. Thank you for subscribing to the show and entering the giveaway. If you're listening, if you're watching, we will have more tech giveaways. And basically what we're doing is if you subscribe to the show and submit a screenshot when a giveaway is happening, you are entered to win. So a Absolutely. So Juan to prepare yourself for future giveaways, be sure to subscribe to Geared Up, the technology podcast. You can go to geekwire.com slash geared up to get all of the links. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Play, all sorts we're of everywhere. wherever wherever you get your podcasts. And you can also, of course, watch the live streams at youtube.com slash year live. Okay, big congrats to Juan Hunter of Danville, Virginia. Yes. The winner of our Echo Spot giveaway. All right. It is time for the National Car Rental Story of the Week, yes, Andrew. Yes, and we have we have an addition this time too, but let's talk about National Car Rental and what they do. Absolutely. So National Car uh, of course, is uh, the National Car Rental Company. And um, here, let me get this for you, Andrew. One second. One second. We messed up. <laughs> there you go, buddy. <laughs> there we go. All right. <laughs> All right. It is time for the National Car Rental Story of the Week. Yes. Of course, Geared Up is brought to you by National Car Rental. National Car Rental. Go National. Go Like a Pro. You can also find my show that I do for National Car Rental. That's called Technically Speaking. Uh, that's at nationalcar.com. You can watch at the control center there. Or YouTube.com slash National Car Rent. And since we're talking about CES, I was actually live streaming from the show floor with National Car Rental last week. You can watch all three of those episodes at National Car Rental's Facebook page. That's right. So find that online. And, of course, I had my first National Your Car first. experience. I'm an official member of the Emerald Club. I had a great experience. Uh, the car was amazing. I, I had a Nissan Altima. Okay. Loved it. Uh, the app was seamless. I was able to essentially did you skip, just... Did you skip the desk? That's what I wanted. You know, know. okay, so th the first time you use the Emerald Club yeah. to sign up, you do have to go up and show your credit card. Okay. But beyond that, you're able to essentially just go straight to the aisle. And then on subsequent visits, if you've used that credit card before, you get ah, to just, okay. just do it again. They Makes just need sense. to verify that your credit card actually worked. Super seamless. Um, the app essentially tracked my trip. It told me, hey, you're on a trip and... And all these things. And it, it was just a, a great experience. So Perfect. highly recommended uh, National Car Rental. And uh, yeah. join the Emerald Club like me. It's free. The Emerald Club is free. That's right. Okay. So let's let's jump into the National Car Rental Story of the Week. Which is? 
This is Google's new smart displays. These are essentially partnerships that Google has struck with the Google Assistant, which is intriguing and interesting for all sorts yes, of different reasons. Absolutely. So they essentially struck partnerships with a variety of different companies, including JBL, Lenovo, LG, and Sony, to create devices build it into whatever you're creating, put it into your hardware. I got to play with the LG version and it is so good. Like what was good about it? It's so the Echo Show, and when you <laughs> if you put remember when the Echo when they announced the Echo Show and we saw it and we were like this thing looks like an old TV. It yes. just looks like Google's, I mean it's not Google's, LG's hardware just looks slim and cool and nice and just the interface, the interface is just like it's like Android. It's like a smartphone. Everything's moving and flowing and just looks good visually. The voice, Google Assistant voice, is probably the best one out there, better than Siri, mm -hmm. better than Alexa. Um, and it's just it's just good. You have Google Maps built in. So basically everything that Google has, Google Photos, so you can, you can say, hey, Google, show me my photos of my vacation in Paris. And from Google Photos, it'll pull everything mm -hmm. in and just show you right there. YouTube works, That's obviously. the big thing. That's the big YouTube thing. YouTube works. So for people who haven't followed that, Amazon and Google are in a dispute, and the result of that dispute, for purposes of the Echo Show, the touchscreen Alexa mm -hmm. device, is that it cannot play YouTube videos. Right. But these devices, of course, having their DNA in Google, are playing YouTube videos, which right. is really key for this kind of device, frankly. Yeah, yeah, but it's just everything. Like, a lot of people use Google calendars. You can say, Google, how, how does my day look today? And it'll know, okay, here's your appointments. We have Google Maps built in, so here's how, the best mapping. Here's how long it's going to take to get there. And, you know, here's videos of that, you know, that hotel you're going to – all that stuff It's just so – seamless and of course it also does smart home stuff so you can control you know anything in your smart home and don't be surprised if in the google app you'll be able to you know you land from a business trip and you want to turn on your thermostat to a certain you know certain temperature or you want to unlock your front door as you approach this is going to be a hub for your home and it is a much more impressive hub than what amazon has currently with the echo show i mean by far Interesting that Google is going with the partner first strategy here, whereas Amazon is mm. doing first party devices. They're making their own hardware with displays in it. Yeah. Google essentially is leveraging their position with Google Assistant and, and has the potential through these partners to get a pretty big footprint out of the gate. The problem is we don't know how much these are going to cost yet. We do. We do. We at least know the LG price. How much is that? So LG has an 8-inch version, okay. which will be 199 and they have a 10-inch version. That's the one I saw, which will be 249 Okay. I don't know the launch date, but I believe it's in the spring. So, that's you know, That's in the, bad, same, right? in the same ballpark as not the Echo bad. Show, depending on the day. Absolutely. And there, and it's just so much. You, you like it a lot better. It. it was so, like, the, the second they started showing it to me, I was like, this is way better than what Amazon has. Okay, so this is something we need to get on to geared up for oh, a future absolutely. show when it absolutely. comes out. The LG yes. device in particular is one that, yep. that you're really bullish I assume on. they all, I mean, I think the hard, the, the software experience is going to be the same. I think maybe the JBL one will be more of a speaker, so you can have it play music and it'll actually like sound like really nice because JBL makes speakers. I'm not sure what the difference is between them all, but the software is the same. So it's kind of like Android. All these different phones run Android. They just have their own hardware features. But you can do, you know, you can do your FaceTime, not, not FaceTime, obviously, but you can do video calls and make phone calls. Google did a great job here with the software. Okay. Let's so, put it that way. So that is the new Google Smart Displays unveiled at CES. We are talking about the highlights from the big consumer electronics show. And here is mine. We're talking oh, about gosh. screens on the counter. How about Alexa under your butt? This is the new Kohler that Smart is the quote Toilet. Of the day. How about Alexa <laughs> under your butt, ladies and gentlemen? So this is a new Smart Toilet. It's part of a range of products that Kohler, the big bathroom products and yep. plumbing giant, unveiled at CES. And the whole idea here, it's a few different things. Uh, first, you can use it to uh, essentially fine-tune, they say, every aspect of your toilet experience. Ambient colored lighting. Wireless, like wireless Bluetooth music sync cap capability to the, to the heated seat and 
foot warmer. Wait, foot warmer? Yes, there is a foot Where warmer built feet? into that. <laughs> I think it might blow Where do you air. Put your feet? I think it might blow air out from underneath the toilet Wait onto a your feet. Wait a minute. But here's the cool thing. So if you use it in conjunction with the the Kohler smart mirror, okay. which has Alexa built into it. So hold on, let's just slow down yes, for a second. Yes. We have we talked about the smart toilet and all those features. There is also a smart mirror yes. that you would install in your bathroom with Alexa built in to the mirror. That's right. This is like Snow White mirror style. <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall. Exactly. Warm up my toilet. Exactly. So you can essentially command the toilet from your mirror using Alexa. So the, the example they give is you could use Alexa to play your own playlist of songs from the toilet. From the Okay. <laughs> Not from the mirror, though. Well, no. The, the, speakers, the, the speakers are in the toilet. <laughs> of course the speakers are in the toilet. Uh, of course. What was I thinking? Yeah. So that is to when me. When does this come out? Uh, th- I think later this year. Uh, so this is an actual product with a release date. Yeah, this is not a concept. Not a this, proof of concept. These, these are actual products. Are you on board? I'm kind of on board with this. Yeah. I'm kind of on board. Is, it, is there pricing? Uh, you know, there is. I don't have it in front okay, of me, but it's, it's not cheap. I'm it's very not curious. Cheap. I mean, come on. This. I mean, when you first talked about it, I was like, what are we, what are we doing here? But the more, you, the more you've said, the more intrigued I've gotten. Yeah, and you haven't even heard about the warm water cleansing. Oh, I haven't heard about that. <laughs> I haven't heard about that. <laughs> so, so that is that is included. Um, so, so all of this is, you know, it's it's something that, that you might want to pay attention to if if this is what you're in the market for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who is it? <laughs> all right. Okay. So moving on. Uh, this was another product coming out of CES that what caught my attention. This is the Toyota. This is a concept. Okay. This is not a product yet. But it is a new e pallet autonomous delivery vehicle. The idea oh. is that you would be able to get all sorts of things from this. It could be essentially like a automated Amazon treasure truck. It could be a personal transportation uh. vehicle. But the, the idea that Toyota is... types of automated vehicles that are zipping around the city providing a variety of purposes not yeah. just moving people around but essentially bridging online and physical retail where you would order something online and oh here it is just sort of zipping up yeah. around the street and to your door right really interesting concept here this caught my attention because you wouldn't really expect this from toyota necessarily sure not at ces at least right but these companies do have to kind of they don't want to become blockbuster right they want to become netflix right so they're thinking towards the future and this is you know this sounds cool like imagine a smart car that you order groceries the car itself pulls out from whatever fleet it's in goes to the grocery store the grocery store might be optimized for this versus walk-in customers. It goes in. They load your groceries in. The car drives to your house. The car pays. So the car pays there. The car drives to your house, drops off your groceries. You take your groceries out, and the car goes away and does some other task. Like, Absolutely. This is this is the future that I want to see. So it's essentially like a small bus, and this is part of an alliance that Toyota is creating, the e pallet Alliance. And original partners, the launch partners, include Amazon, Mazda, Uber, and Pizza Hut. <laughs> what? Pizza Hut. All right. Yes. So All right. you get a sense for from those partnerships sort of where they're headed with this. Right. Very interesting. And you'll want to check out GeekWire.com to see Uber. a picture of this and everything we talked about. Absolutely. Yeah. So lots going on. Bottom line, Andrew, you were there at CES. I know you were working the booths for yes. part of it, but you also got a chance to walk around. Was this... Uh, blockbuster CES, game-changing technology, or was it a little more evolutionary? Give us your key takeaways and your impressions. I think so. It showed that the next, like the one big thing from CES, I don't know when the last time you were there was, but last year. Okay, so I don't know if you got this sense, but I always felt like at CES every year, comp- Apple's never there. Apple right. itself is never there, but companies are always trying to jump on. Apple's bandwagon, either with, you know, tons of iPhone cases or computers that look like MacBooks or, you know, just accessories for for Apple's ecosystem. I always felt like CES was the third party Apple show, plus a whole bunch of other stuff as well. This year, that stuff wasn't there. Like there there was not this feeling of everybody wants to jump on 
the the popularity and the success of Apple. It was everybody wants to jump on the popularity and success of Alexa and Google Assistant. Wow. That was this year. Apple was not part of the conversation, and voice assistants were the conversation. No matter what people were releasing, they wanted to make sure you knew. I mean, Siri was there, too, and Bixby, too, so don't get me wrong. But I guess my point is it was no longer about Apple hardware and what can we do to, like, jump on that bandwagon. It was more voice assistants are the future. What can we do to integrate those into our product, regardless of what our product is? How can we build that in? Two points on that from our team on the ground in CES. I asked them what their biggest impression was. In terms of sheer advertising and the blitz, Google and Google mm -hmm. Assistant, yeah. they said, was everywhere. Right. On they the spent monorail. A lot of money, yes. yes, they spent a lot of money and then they got rained out <laughs> yes, on that they first did. day, which yes, we talked about last week. And the other thing, one of the voice assistants you did not mention was Cortana. They right. were actually there, unlike Siri, unlike Apple. Microsoft was actually there behind the scenes. They're playing a long game, and boy, it seems really risky. I mean, they to, played a long game with Windows Mobile, too, yeah, and we see what happened there. Exactly, and I, I, I think folks are looking at Microsoft and wondering whether that's going to happen again, but they insist, hey, we are, they are creating the partnerships, the underpinnings for long-term success in this market, but the thing that we talked about last week where Alexa is starting to go on these PCs, yep. that's where you really look at it, and it's hard not to see Amazon eating Microsoft's lunch in that way Yeah, overall. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's the year of the start as we move toward true smart devices, which we do not have. I would say we do not have today. We have connected devices, but they're not smart. The year 2020, so two years from now at CES, when 5G is starting to roll out, we're going to see true smart devices that talk to each other without us having to ask for something. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be – so that's where we're, we're kind of transitioning. That is going to be the next big frontier for tech. All right. Good stuff. Until next time, I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. Thanks for listening to Geared Up.